here on five different occasions this year. Bergsma has had 20 kills or better in a match. Brenner into the tape, point BYU. So the play before the break, the play after, we've seen some miscommunication between hitters, et cetera, and that's the risk of this offense where you have different things happening and the hitters calling their routes instead of the setter. Sometimes they don't end up on the same table because they have to call it in mid while the ball's in the air instead of before. So right out of the timeout, another quick timeout from Jim Moore of the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage. Continues on uh, December 13th at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. That will be the semifinals for you. And then the championship on Saturday, December 15th at 7 o'clock, also on ESPN2. For more information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 89 NCAA championships. Plenty of intrigue in this tournament already. And Jennifer Hampson making a name for herself. She sure has, using her height to her advantage. And it's not that she always hits so hard, but she can hit different angles at six foot seven. And Oregon would be well advised to get more than one blocker in front of her. Well, let's get to know Hampson. She uh, has a mom who played basketball at BYU, enjoys her mother's lasagna. And the best moment of her athletic career thus far, winning a West Coast Conference championship. Now has her eyes set on an even bigger prize. They played in the national semis back in 1993. And they have not been there since. That was under the direction of Elaine Michaelis. One of the few female coaches to get to the semis or in Mary Wise at Florida's case, even to the finals one year. But nobody yet to win a title. Knocking on the door. Christy Johnson Lynch, another one who came very close to semis last year with Iowa State. Christy Johnson, very popular in these parts, starred for Nebraska. Won a national championship with the Huskers and now the head coach for Iowa State. They will be playing Stanford later tonight out in Berkeley. They've got a lot of great matchups all night long on ESPN3 and your watch ESPN app. Penn State, by the way, they are underway early against Kentucky. The other match going on simultaneously to ours. The USC match set to start at the top of the hour. They'll take on Wichita State. The Shockers, their first trip to the Sweet 16. They're the Cinderella choice thus far. Brenner has it blocked. That time, BYU didn't even need the big size. They were well positioned. And that was Nicole Warner, one of the top two blockers in the country at 1.81 blocks per set. Uh, her coach says she has a, a great sense of where to put her hands, and that time she did, and she was the only blocker up on that play. Almost got a touch there, too. Elena Bergsma with the kill, the fifth-year senior out of Chandler, Arizona. Yep, so you can see the middle blocker there, Nicole Warner, reaching the right way, but she didn't have any help. And then a very effective serve from Lauren Plum. They want to go at the freshman Alexa Gray timeout. She plays a lot of front row, but not so strong on the reception of serve yet. And we're trying to pick on number nine right there as Plum gets the ace. There's one other game underway, one other match underway, and Kentucky actually has the lead in the opening set 16 to 14 over Penn State. That's going on at West Lafayette. The second game there later tonight, Purdue at home to take on Minnesota. And the Elite Eight Saturday afternoon. That'll get things started for us tomorrow. Four games, all the regional finals for you starting at 4 o'clock Eastern. Our game, the second game. So far, the Cougars, a couple of sweeps in this NCAA tournament. They beat New Mexico State. And then they defeated the University of Oklahoma in the second round. For Sean Olmstead's club. The Ducks also a pair of 3-0 wins over Colorado and Dayton. And both those, with all those 3-0 wins, the coach has to be thinking, okay, am I prepared for a real battle here? Because these teams, this is probably the deepest, most well-rounded regional yeah. of the four. All, the only one with all four seeded teams left. There have been a few surprises around the country. The opening weekend upsets, four seeded teams got bounced including a couple that were 
in the uh, semifinals last year, the nine seed Florida State got beat by Purdue and the defending national champs, Karcher UCLA Bruins ousted by Michigan State. That, that sets up a real intriguing Michigan State Michigan regional semi later tonight. I was there for that one Saturday and Kathy Georgia's Spartans did a fantastic job against the Bruins put a lot of pressure on on UCLA as they got back onto their home floor in the renovated Poly yeah. Pavilion. Yeah, that's so even more impressive. All those upsets were at the higher seated house. Gray gets another kill. Point BYU. And that's that's what she does so well at. She elevates and reaches, has some pretty good vision, hits right over the block. Her weakness, and she's looking to shore it up. She's got three years to do it uh, at BYU, is to get the ball control, the backcourt skills going. But front court, she's doing a nice job. Kenace Finley, the freshman from Fort Collins, gets the point. Looked like they were in trouble here initially. It sure was, but the height there of number five, Kenace Finley at six foot two, she hung and reached and got it down. But if you're Oregon, you think you're in great shape. You're hitting 357, but the problem right now is BYU is at 571. And again, a baseball 300 hitter is good for a hitting percentage in volleyball. And what you got to be happy with if you're Oregon is that you're only down by two, yeah. maybe by one. You have the advantage. The ball's on your side of the net, and uh, but a nice up there by BYU. Chance here in transition for Oregon. Now Bergsma. So that big difference in hitting efficiency and Oregon got to be really pleased only down 20 to 19. Plenty of time to score off their own serve. Bergsma her fourth kill in eight tries. Now it's BYU looking to go to the big girl Hampson dug up. Here's the Ducks chance. Brenner tried to tip it and reject it at the net by Nicole Warner. The senior out of Rigby, Idaho, second in the country in blocks. Coach Olmstead said she has a nose and eyes for the ball. More importantly, eyes. It's really important as a blocker to see what's happening, and she could see that the hitter didn't have a swing, decided to wait a little on her jump and hang. Through the block that time, which included Hampson. Well done by Williams. Interesting that Plum went back to that set after they misconnected before. That's a tough set to run, risky set, but she wants to get back in rhythm with her middle hitter, show some confidence. Bergsman with the serve and the overpass jumped on by Lauren Plum, ties it up. Sets to 25, got a win by two, our 10th tie with three lead changes in this opening set. Plum to the outside, the block got a piece of it. Back to Hampson. And she'll get the kill for BYU. You know, you can lean toward that. You can know, the whole gym can know, Hampson's going to get the ball. And that's something that she's gotten better at this season, season according to her coach. The pressure of being the go-to hitter. But she still made it happen, even though all of Oregon knew it was going that way. Six kills in this set, and Bergsma responds with her fifth. It's, the, it's really Hampson versus Bergman down the stretch. And you can see how both teams love to set those two hitters in pressure situations. Kind of the red zone after 20 points when the game's close. Huge serve by Cat Fisher. Timeout, BYU, they're down one. The fourth lead change, 11 ties. The biggest lead of the whole set has been three points. The last few serves by Oregon been nasty. Hitting seams, and this one goes right toward the corner. The passer, that's the third ace. Passer number 13, Kim Dahl, having trouble getting her arms. They were late getting into the path of the ball. Too late to control it. So now Oregon up one. As we look at the Austin Regional, the uh, first match there starting at 6 Eastern, that's Southern California and Wichita State. Followed up by Texas and Florida. And if you haven't seen USC's Pac-12 Freshman of the Year, Samantha Bricio, she is one to watch. 
Of course, you got Texas, your Big 12 champs, and Florida, your SEC champs, going head to head. Uh, another deep regional. You, uh, coaches talk about somebody having a big arm or a, hitting a heavy ball. Samantha Bricio is one of those, even though she's only a freshman. But we're also getting to see one here in Elena yeah. Bergma, and that's and the gray. kind of and and across the net with Gray, and that's the kind of hitter that you love to block but when they see the ball well and see the block well you don't get very many opportunities. Yeah the future of the game is in good hands if you take a look around the country at some of the freshmen another good one tonight. Inky Ajataku the freshman out at Stanford that's the nightcap this evening. One of a class of five and four starters for Stanford that have helped them get all the way to the number one ranking up during part of the season and an easy Pac-12 title. Here we go for Oregon. Bergsma gets the kill, and it is set point for the Ducks. Remember, it was 20 to 18 since then. Major turnaround. They started out at 19 and put a lot of pressure. Going to be a free ball for BYU. Hanneman sets it outside and the kill for Kimberly Dahl. You could see that that ball was going out, but of course, Cat Fisher, number 12 for Oregon, upset with herself for, she just couldn't get out of the way. But now Oregon having the advantage, another set point. The advantage is that they'll have the ball and get to run their offensive pattern, and they have a good pass to do it. Plum gets it back to Brenner, and that will go wide, and the Oregon Ducks take the opener. 25 to 23.